It's, it's funny, I, I was always told that northern, the northern side was much harder. We were soft downtown. Well, we are a bit soft, yeah, in that respect, yeah. Right. We're, you know, but not, softy. But not, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Right. not when it comes to water. <laughs> It's here at you. Yeah, 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 Keeping well today. I'm in Chiddingfold, lovely rural part of the world. I can hear a skylark in the distance, which is great. But today's video is all about the cleanliness of your car, and by that I mean cleaning your car, detailing specifically. So the car detailing industry is worth billions these days, and there's lots of places popping up to take care of your car and its cleanliness needs. I get it looking very shiny. Indeed, long gone are those days when it was a sponge and a bucket and lots of swirl marks on your paint. I'm fastidious about a clean car. It's a true fact that a clean car is 25% faster. But I'm gonna be talking to a good friend of mine called Simon, who runs his own detailing place called Penman Detailing. He's been around for quite a while now and doing very well, very successful and lots of great feedback from customers. So we're going to be chatting to him about just what the detailing process looks like and how scientific you can get and how keen you can get on this. But it's really interesting stuff and uh, we're going to dive straight in. <laughs> So here we are in the detail. <laughs> so here we are in the detailing studio. I'm joined by the wonderful Simon. So maybe for the benefit of those of you, uh, you could give yourself a quick intro. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm here with Tab today. Simon from Penman Detailing um, here in the beautiful countryside in Surrey, in a lovely village called Chiddingfold. Okay. And how did you get into detail? Because I think it's fair to say that your career mm. path has been quite varied. Incredibly. Quite, quite, quite interesting and, and in a lot of But I think there's, there's one common theme that I've noticed throughout your, your career path, and that's probably an attention to detail, right? Yes, OCD, you mean. Yeah. Per perfection, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Perfection, yeah. OCD, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Pain in the arm. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess you've got to be like that a little bit, but so how did you kind of get from where you were to, to detailing today? Um, well, a career path started completely differently. I mean, it, you know, from where I started to where I've ended up mm. um, is completely different. Um, you know, I started in the music industry, um, uh, went to university, studied music, yep. um, got a degree. Um, ran a management company for many years, had a, some success, had a couple of top 40 records with, with uh, oh, Sony backed artists. Um, nothing to do with Agadoo, Ag Ag nothing to do with Agadoo, Ag actually. Yeah, we thought about covering it, right? Um, but um, I just couldn't get the moves. <laughs> um, <it's>, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, yeah, and then uh, from that point, it just you know. The thing with that business is very fickle, a bit like mm. the, the, sure. the world of entertainment, TV, anything yeah. like that, where it tends to be... Um, and here we are on YouTube, right? And here we are on YouTube, yeah, yeah full <laughs> circle. Um, but, um, so yeah, from the creative point of view, very much you know used to that and being involved in that industry. Yeah. Um, and I suppose my eye for detail mm. has transcended across my whole career, no matter what I've done, whether it be music, you know, in the car business. Great. You know, I worked in the car business for 15 years. So a natural progression in your right at home here, yeah? Um, I think so, yeah, very much so. Um, I've loved cars since I was tiny. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I had, a, I had a little pedal tractor when I was two, and you know, my mum, bless her, she 
um, would laugh at the fact that I would do little three-point turns in, in a very <laughs> narrow hallway in a little council flat that we had when we were little. Um, and she knew then that you know it was um, it was to be at some form. And you still struggle with three-point turns today. And even now, I hit the, I hit the, <laughs> the, the, uh, the skirting board. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a big fan of these here. Massive no fan of Porsches. Yeah, as you can see, yeah. uh, not yet mounted on the uh, <laughs> on the wall. I've only just framed it yesterday. Um, but I saw this, um, and the generational progression of the Porsche is probably the most iconic sports car. Mm ever built. Yeah. Um, timeless beauty. Uh, timeless beauty from yeah. the late 60s, from the original right through to the latest 992. Um, yeah, uh, just a, a, a wonderful evolution of, um, of a sports car. Um, and that will be going up on the wall Excellent. in the next couple of days. Anyway, that's probably a topic for another video. Mm. Yes. Fine. Topic of today, detailing, yes. very heavily focused on how to clean the car. Now, when I was, when I was young, in fact, probably in my 20s as well, all the cars I've owned, I used to be, uh, Mr. Sponge and Bucket of Water, as I think most people think do. Right? That was, yeah. And you'd look at that now probably as a detail of oh, grimace. I would grimace. You yes. would grimace, yeah. Um, so detailing now, I mean, I've got some, some products at home, you know, for light detailing, but going to the kind of ceramic coating level that these guys do, the pros, is way beyond my skill set. But I do love a clean car, as I said in the intro. Uh, it's been scientifically proven that a clean car is 25% faster than a dirty one uh, around any circuit. It, it's a true fact. You can look, at, look, uh, look that up online. Um, but I just want to look specifically at the detailing process. Yes. Right? Um, so maybe you can sort of talk through the initial stages of, of detailing. Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, it's... When you get a car in, um, I'd probably maybe look at the type of cars you get from manufacturers that come off the production line and how they are as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole another sort of uh, story in itself in, in lots of ways. And that's been um, more prevalent during the pandemic. Mm. And the fact that um, customers who are buying some lovely cars, mm. um, you know, although a new car for anybody is a lovely car, um, but you know, specifically some of the cars that we get through here yeah. um, can be very expensive, um, far more than I could ever afford. But you know, um, and those cars, I don't know what it is, but I suppose maybe the expectation is that you know they should be prepared Perfect, yeah. to a level that you know is 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 expecting of a car of that value. But no, is the answer to that question. Um, uh, pretty much every new car needs work. Um, it's amazing how they come in here with things. I mean, cars are polished and prepped when they come off the production line. Yeah. A lot of them tend to use particular types of machine, which can leave holographic marks in, swirl marks, just generally preparation marks. Um, and uh, they show up in these yeah. wonderful lighting situations um, and highlight the issues that are present in new cars. Yeah. So this is where I come in. Yeah. So I will perfect that, yes, mm -hmm. and, and and make that car as if as it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and more hopefully. Yeah? yeah. So we 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 take it to another level. So making, I suppose, for want of a better saying, you know, I could more often than not make cars, make beautiful cars look even more beautiful mm. and then protect them. Great. Okay, so that's one of the the examples we can use, if you've seen an older car, right, out and about, and, and you kind of look at it reflecting in the sunlight, you get those classic swirl marks. And I've read some horror stories online. <laughs> One, there was a, a chauffeur, he had a, a roller, and uh, you know, it wasn't his car, he didn't own it, he, he just drove the car. And whenever a, a bird had an accident on, on his car, he had a, a green scouring pad in the glove box, which you use to get the bird mark off Excellent. the car. Yeah, on that bird, that would remove it. <laughs> it, it, and it certainly removed <laughs> the, uh, the bird doth. <laughs> what, what do we call it these days? Bird poop, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it certainly removed that yes. and the clear coat a little bit as well. But the swell marks are caused by marks in the, in the clear coat, right? You see yes. In that flexion. yes, that's what you see. Yes, and, that, of course, yes. and that's because you get out. Um, partly. That, oh. would, that is what I would class as an enhancement. Right. There so are certain different. levels okay. of clearing paint work up in terms right. of going from um, you know a very tatty um, uh, finish right through to something that's 
uh, you know, glass like mirror like in lots of ways. Okay. And there are so many processes to, to get to either that or as close to perfection mm -hmm. as possible. I don't think perfection is actually achievable. Are you sure? Um, yes. With your track record? I know. It's something that I'm dealing with um, <laughs> every day, but you right. know, I'm on the tabs, so that's <laughs> fine. That's fine, I can deal with it. Um, but enhancement okay. is a very popular um, detailing process. It's something I do a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, an enhancement is required to get rid of those, Thrones. you know, bad wash marring marks, swirl marks, mm -hmm. holograms in the paintwork through, again, bad preparation okay. from point of factory right through its life at any point. If a car's ever visited a body shop, quite often they'll use rotary machines and when you get the car back, it will be still covered in in the swirl marks from the machining process. Right. So the machines I use remove that. Okay. Um, so an enhancement is also required, as we spoke about, for when we do a coating. So, um, and we go back to that whole hand-in-hand -hand thing with dealerships that will um, sell these types of supposed ceramic coatings that are mm. clearly watered down because they have to do this in a, you know, Mass, well, yeah, well, absolutely. In a mass scale. market on the scale, yeah. um, at speed, because they need to turn it around. They can't spend, as I do, two or three days mm. doing that process. Mm. Um, but you know, they're still charging the consumer a hell of a lot of money for that process that they're doing in hours, where detailers will take days to do the same process. Um, and what they don't do, more often than not, is enhance the paintwork first. It's all about the preparation. Detailing is very much about the preparation. It's like anything, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If you're going to you know, paint a wall or or do some you know work on some wood or something, I mean, you would you would prepare it first. You know, sand it, smooth it, yeah, prep mm -hmm. it, put an undercoat on. And the key thing there is because once that ceramic coating goes on, it kind of seals everything. It's on the paint in, is that right? So if you've got any imperfections there, they're kind of bonded in and that's it? They, well, that's partly that, yes, absolutely. So when you put it on, then of course the only way to remove that is to physically you know, machine that right. ceramic coating off again. Okay. Um, if it's on there, because it bonds very quickly and they are, and the right and the good ceramics in the world, mm. um, the better ones, um, and, there's, and there's a few of them. Um, do bond very, very firmly mm. to the paintwork. So yes, you would have to machine right. that off. You won't even know that's happening. Yeah. Um, so I think what we're talking about now is. Uh, oh, cross -legged or not? I can't remember. What we'll do now is probably talk through the, the process. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Continuity areas, mend and detail. What's a different top? <laughs> but we'll talk through the um, the detailing process then. Uh, what happens when you when you get a car in? Okay, so looking at the, the detailing process, and we'll probably cut to some footage yep. while we talk, to so you can sort of see in more detail exactly how it looks, and it's quite technical some of this. Um, but you get a car in, somebody somebody calls you up, says, hey Simon, uh, I'm going to bring my car down to pen and detailing because yep. it doesn't look great, and I want you yep. to make it look better. Yep. Um, let's start not with the, the, the ceramic side of things, yep. and, and the, uh, so what did you call the, the word? Enhancement. Enhancement. It's very specific terminology here. Yep. Uh, so sort of a, a detailing in terms of cleanliness, yeah, getting the car looking great. What, what well, right, you there's, there's, a, there's a big process before, and this is, what, again, just going back to the preparation. Yeah. It's all about preparation. It's not just about, obviously, before you even enhance that paintwork, mm -hmm. that paintwork needs to be clean. Sure. So. Um, in terms of the cleaning process, it's a process of about a good dozen stages. Right. Yeah. So there are many stages before you even touch the car. And again, when we go back to roadside cleaning companies, you take your car in 10 minutes later, mm. it's back out and it's cleanish. Right. Yeah. But of course, you know, they make contact with the car very quickly. Mm. Yeah. And the contaminants that are on that car haven't been removed. Yeah. Is that because they need to soak off or That's because, time? yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a time thing, it's a product thing, mm -hmm. um, it's a process scenario. Um, and, you know, to speed that process up so much, yeah, mm -hmm. they do a, an okay process, but they do it in a very short period of time. Right. Um, and then, of course, once they put the contact wash in, yeah. there's going to be particles, there's going to be grit on the paint, and as yeah. soon as they're starting to wash this, then it's marring the paintwork. Um, so, um, in terms of process, uh, you know, we would pre-wash, we would snow foam. Um, snow foams are 
quite trendy now. Yeah, you yeah. see a lot of that. Actually, uh, yeah. The cars look great with them on. Yeah. It looks a bit weird when you've got a car that looks like it's covered in snow in the middle of summer. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, 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 to be fair, jury's out a little bit in terms of what they do. Right. Um, but they will help to clean the car. This is mm. a process about getting the car as clean as possible before you touch it right. in any shape or form. Yeah? So that's what would happen. Um, and then we would use the relevant wash mitt. Yeah. Right. We would use a two bucket method. Yeah. So you're rinsing, you've got rinse water mm. in one and you've got the soap in the other with the proverbial grit guards in. Right. Where you just agitate your microfiber yeah. wash mitt or okay. wash um, glove or whatever you've got. So you just you agitate it, you've got the grit out. Yeah, got the grit out. So and then we go for the you know the contact wash continues yeah. and then it gets all rinsed off. Um, what we tend to use as well is um, a, a filtering system at the last rinse. Right. So okay. it doesn't leave some you know either little or no water spotting because there is calcium in, in water. We're in a very hard area in yeah. Surrey. Yeah. So unlike um, you know, the Northern crew who have got slightly softer water in, in many areas. It's funny, I, I was always told that northern, the northern side was much harder. We were soft downtown. Well, we are, so, yeah, in that respect, yeah. Right. We're, you know, but soft not, egg, But not, not, egg, not, egg, not when it comes to water. <laughs> So yeah, we are um, we're in a hard water area, and it um, it is a, a real problem area. It does leave streaks, doesn't it? I know it's when I clean my car, you've rinsed it off, and the sun dries the the, the, the water. You get these big streak marks. Yeah, which car. is which is why in the summer it, yeah. it makes the process harder. Right. Because you have to work a little smarter and a little quicker. Yeah, okay. All right, so once you've uh, washed the car, rinsed it all, uh, what would you then look to do next? Because I've seen you go into some quite uh, oh, detail, quite a high level of detail would probably be the right word. Yes. Things like blowing all, all the, um, the water off using a, a blower. That kind oh, of, of course, thing. yeah. I mean, look, we're, we're literally scratching the surface, no pun intended, um, <laughs> in terms of the wash process. We could, you know, I could talk for hours on you know, each process as it goes yeah. along, but um, you know, detailing brushes are used for the outside for badges. Obviously, you know, there's a process for cleaning the wheels. You know, right. and you would do that first. You okay. always do wheels first, um, and then move on to the bodywork yeah. um, at the wash stage. Um, but um, once we dry, or we'll get to the point of drying the car, um, we would use um, a, dry, a drying towel, a microfiber drying towel in some form. Um, and some of the towels that I've got, mm -hmm. you'd have in the bathroom. They're that luxurious. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So um, they're very soft, mm -hmm. um, and there is a little technique which you may have seen detailers do, where they will lay the cloth on the yeah, yeah. Um, on the panel, and they will pull away from yeah. them. Yeah. Um, they're very, very absorbent. Those towels, incredibly so. So vigorous rubbing in swells is not the done thing. No, it's really. all about making as little contact as possible. Right. Yeah. So always straight movements when you're washing. Don't wash in a swirl movement. Always wash in straight lines. Yeah. Um, and then when you're drying, I tend to pull. I only tend to really use those towels on the flatter panels. Right. Yeah. Um, all the intricate stuff. Once it's back into the unit gets mm. air dried. Right. Again, I'm not making any contact with the car at that point, but it's blowing all the excess water out of all those little crevices, you know, the little mm. annoying wing mirrors would drip down the side of the car and again, yeah. potentially leave watermarks. Right, okay. So it's... So once you've completed that stage, mm. um, would you be looking at, and we're not talking about enhancement here, polishing the paint, this yeah. is just sort of cleaning the car, getting it ready. Yeah. Would you, uh, if a customer wanted, would you kind of polish it up then and leave, uh, by polish I mean wax the car and leave it at that or would, how would that work from there? Good question. Um, I think it, it comes back to the initial conversation with the customer, yeah. of course, and what, um, what it is they're after, mm -hmm. what service they are looking for. Sometimes they know what they want yeah. from the app, from the get-go, you know, they'll, they'll ring and say, I want this done because they've been on the website and they've had a look at the... Um, the menu, so to speak, yeah. Mm. Um, so they've, they've they've picked a start or a main course and a dessert, yeah. And they, you know, they've they've said this is what I want. 
but from a standard point of view, if it's just coming in just to make that car just look as nice as it can without any real extra uh, polishing work or anything like that, yeah. what we call is a quick detailer. Right. Quick detailers are fantastic. There are, there's lots of them on the market. They all do a very similar job. Mm. I'm sure one's that much better than anyone else. You know, just get a you know, decent quality one. And they are, they are really good. And they will add a bit of gloss. They will put a little bit of, um, you know, a bit of a hydrophobic um, content um, in those, so they will repel the wall. So that's the beading thing that we love to see as a test after you've detailed a car, oh. but how's it in the water just The, ne the need for beads. The, the need for beads. The need for, the beads. Need for beads. <laughs> love it, okay. So let's say we've had a, a good cleaning session, the car's looking lovely, and then the customer wanted to take it that next level, right? Yes. Um, because this process you just mentioned here, it won't get rid of those uh, swell marks no. and imperfections in the paint. No. That's another process, that's the enhancement process. So That's the enhancement process, and then of course you can go further than that. As I've said, you know, the enhancement process is required at, at, the, at the very least mm. if a coating is being applied. Yeah? Right. If the last stage protection, which is what they call the LSP in the right. detailing world, is to be a coating of some description, it really does need to be enhanced beforehand. Right, yeah? okay. Now that can be a very light enhancement, it yep. doesn't have to be a heavy enhancement and of course again you know this could be another chapter in terms of pads compounds mm. types of paint soft paint hard paints mm. um, there are lots of factors that go into making that a detailer makes as a decision in terms of um, what they're going to use gotcha. to, to correct and because uh, every car's a little bit different yeah. mm. you get used to some cars and some paints yeah. German cars have hard paint Japanese tend to be soft. I heard there was a transition from oil-based to water-based paints, right? Yes. At some point in the industry. And oil-based was a lot harder and the water-based paints are a bit softer these days, is that? Yes, yes, that absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very much so, yeah. And another, another question that you, I hear lots of different answers to this question is, once you've had a, a car ceramic coated, mm -hmm. do you then wax it afterwards or not? Is there any point in waxing it as a user to maintain it or? Um, there, well, there, there is a, yeah, there is a, a school of, uh, of thought or, or um, an idea um, yeah. that goes around that ceramic coatings, um, when they talk about self-cleaning, mm. that, you know, they've got, all you're putting on there is hundreds of little lemmings cleaning cars for you while it's sitting outside um, and actually never clean it again. Right. Which is a nonsense. Okay. So um, there has to be maintenance. When a coating gets put on, depending on the type of coating it is, mm. will have a, um, a, a, a lifespan, a duration, and they vary. Okay. One year to so-called eight, nine, ten years. But yeah. you know that's that's a, another discussion as to whether they last quite that long. But um, with maintenance, with a good coating, yeah. you should be getting sort of you know five or six years out of it. Mm. Um, and that's the life of you know of, a, of car ownership for, for maybe each owner. So, time scales uh, for this type of work. If we're looking at the, the, the cleanliness side of things, so that's the detailing bit. Mm -hmm. How long would a typical detail take from start to finish? I would say basic detail that we were discussing. You know, customer comes in, car was cleaned. Twelve, come, twelve comes steps in, or so. Twelve steps or so uh, in to be you know, dried. Um, what I would class as a, an interior tweak as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then the application of a, a high gloss quick detailer, mm -hmm. yeah, just to give it that pop and that finish, yeah. um, would be a day. A day, yeah. okay. And then the enhancement process, how long would, would we be looking at there? That again, it depends on the size of the car, right. really. Okay. So um, again, with an enhancement, normally, again, it's that whole thing. You wouldn't ceramic coat without an enhancement, and if I enhance, I say to people, make sure you protect it. Yeah? Right. I'm so it's silly paying all the money to get an enhancement done if you're not going to put some protection on it afterwards. Yeah? Because the whole idea is to get it looking lovely mm. and then you want to maintain that loveliness. Yeah. So in that respect, it's probably, depending on the size of car, depends on whether or not it's a one stage or two stage mm. um, enhancement, whether it's a one or two stage ceramic coating, um, can last anywhere from two to uh, two days to a week. Okay. Right, well, it's been fantastic to hear, hear about this. Uh, what's transparent to me now is that 
this could be a whole series in itself, the amount of detail we could go into about detail. Uh, it's a fascinating topic, definitely huge in the car industry at the moment. A lot of people doing this, and I love a detailed car. I think they look fantastic. They really, they really pop. And when you kind of crouch down and look at the panel and just see that mirror finish, I mean, what's not? What's, what's not, not to love? Like? Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so do support your local detailers. If you're local to Chillingfold, give this guy a try. Uh, very good service. He's pretty heavily in demand already, though, I think it's fair to say, right? So Nice position to be in. Yeah. Nice position to be in. Yeah, absolutely. So very humble. Really appreciate it, Simon. Pleasure. Great to have you No worries. Catch you soon. Bye for now. All right, wicked, mate. Nice one.